Okay, after spending some time working on equivalent fractions and just getting more comfortable with fractions, now we're going to look at comparing them. So we're going to be given two fractions and we're going to have to decide which one is greater than and which one is less than. So I'm going to give you a strategy that's going to help you um, visually see how one fraction might be bigger than the other. Okay, so I'm almost done with this page, but I'm going to write at the bottom. Comparing fractions. And I'm on page 55. Okay, comparing fractions. So let's write our objective at the top. So we're going to write today I can Compare fractions using benchmark fractions. So let's define what a benchmark fraction is because it is going to be your lifesaver when it comes to comparing fractions. So understanding what it is and choosing one that works for you is going to be beneficial, okay? So let's write benchmark fractions. A benchmark fraction is a common fraction used as a reference to compare other fractions. So for example, a benchmark fraction might be one-fourth or one-half or three-fourths. The only thing a benchmark fraction is, is a fraction that you use all the time. So like one half, we use that all the time. We see it all the time. One fourth, we see that all the time. Three fourths, we see that all the time. So what I want you to do is choose one benchmark fraction that you're just gonna stick with. So for me, I am going to be using one half when I compare fractions because that's the one I'm most comfortable with and the one that I think I'm gonna remember. So I'm gonna choose the one half, but you can choose the one that works for you. Okay, so I'm going to circle one half because that's just going to be the benchmark fraction I use for the rest of my math, okay? So let's look at steps of how we can use a benchmark fraction when comparing, okay? And let's leave some room down here to do an example. So I'm going to put example. Let's say they give you two, six, and they give you a little circle to put your greater than a lesson versus seven eighths. And we need to figure out which one is greater and which one is less. So step one, draw area models to represent the fractions being compared, okay? And I'm gonna leave some space in the middle because step two is to draw area models for benchmark fraction, okay? So what I'm going to do, I've got my first one, two, six. So six is how many parts my whole is broken up into. So i got to draw five lines, one, two, three, four, five. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. How many do I have? Did I take away two? So I'm going to, you can shade it in or highlight, color it in, whatever works for you. Okay, that's two, six. 
Okay, then I'm going to draw my other one. I'm going to leave some space for the middle. My other one, I have how many parts is my hole broken into? Eight. I'm going to draw seven lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'll give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many do I have? Seven. So I need to shade all the way up to the last one. Okay. So this is seven eighths. Now I need to draw my benchmark fraction. Like I said, I'm going to use one half because that's just something that's familiar with me and I know it's going to stick with me. So I'm going to draw an area model for my one half. So one half is broken into two parts with one hole shaded. Okay, step three is to compare. So look how easy it is to compare. Which one is greater than? Is 7 eighths greater than 2 sixths? Yeah, look at it. It takes up way more space, right? If you draw your area models the same, you have your benchmark fraction to kind of show you which one's greater and which one's less. So since 7 eighths is greater, I'm going to draw my little alligator mouth tackling the bigger number. Okay, so this problem reads as 2 6 is less than 7 8, right? Okay, let's look at another one together. Let's do 3 fourth is greater than or less than 2 8. Okay. First step, draw my area models for my first for my two numbers. So I'm going to draw one here, and that's going to be for three fourths, four parts broken into one, two, three. How many do I have? I took three of those parts. Leave some space for your benchmark fraction. Then I have eight, so it's broken into eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many of those parts do you have? Two is your numerator, so you got two. And what's my benchmark fraction gonna be? I'm going to do one half. This is two eighths. This is one half broken into two parts. I take away one of those parts. Okay, super easy to visualize it. Look, you can tell right away. Three-fourths is greater than two-eighths because look how much space it takes up. So using your benchmark fraction in the middle, you can see super easily which one's greater and which one's less. So if two-eighths is, or if three-fourths is greater, I have my greater than sign eating my bigger number and my lesser sign facing the two eights, okay? Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple to do for homework, so let's draw a line. I want you to compare one third and six tenths, and then I want you to compare three fifths and two eights. Okay, so draw your two fractions, stick your benchmark fraction in the middle, shade, and then it should be super easy for you to visually see which fraction is greater. Okay, 